Okay, so good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Nice to be here. Also, how has your experience been in Bithoragar? Um, it's a big question, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but I would say that overall, it's been a really good experience, and mm. I think that the main reason why it has been mm -hmm. good is that uh, I think uh, we feel that people have welcomed us. Mm. Uh, it's like we've gotten close to people. Mm. Uh, have had many amazing cultural experiences. Yeah, it is. And uh, you know, with all of these things, it's uh, yeah makes it a great experience. Mm. So how do you see life in the mountains as we live in mountains? So how do you see it? Um it's I like the fact that it's a bit slower than mm -hmm. in the big cities. Yeah. I think that it's a beautiful thing that people still care about their neighbors. Mm. You know, and uh, and you know the community feeling mm. in the, particularly in the village, but also in Pitoragar. Mm. You know, the neighbors they still sit together, have chai. Uh, you are part of a bigger community, and I mm. think that's a very nice thing. Mm. And I think. That's something that people who go to live in big cities, they miss. Yeah. A few days ago when I was talking to you about the cultural difference, you know, you talked about two terms like the cold culture and the warm culture. And so would you like to highlight uh, some of the differences like the cold culture and what is warm culture? I mean, this term comes from the temperature in a place. Yeah. So uh, in European countries, mm. most especially North Europe, mm. uh, would be seen as cold culture, mm. uh, and that has to do with the cold temperature. Yeah. But it's also, you know, maybe from that comes mm. a more private culture where mm. people stay more inside of their houses, especially mm. in the winter when it's cold. Mm. And, uh, and people become much more private, individualistic. Mm. Uh, it's, uh, it's more about me and my immediate family than it is about the whole community. Mm. And that would be the main difference. And then there are many smaller things as mm. well. But uh, generally in a warm culture, you're not as fixed on the time frame mm. of especially social settings. Mm. Uh, whereas in a, in a cold culture, the time is very important mm. and uh, yeah there are many other time things as well yeah. yeah yeah so a few days ago when i was talking to a group that came here to the ilc uh, and particularly nathan he talked about that the mountain life here that uh, sometime what happens we as we are living here and we have been living here in the mountains and we take sometimes we take things for granted yeah. and he was talking a lot about like you know how beautiful it is to be here and living you know and that all the places here the mountains so I have heard, you know, that you have also been to tracks. Yeah. So, would you like to any would you like to share your experience in any track that you've been to? Um, I've been on many tracks, and yeah. especially the first years we came to India, I went on many many tracks. So. Um, I think that uh, going on a track is a very kind of peaceful experience, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, especially these days when everyone is completely you know, hooked on their phones. Yeah, definitely. You know, when you come up there and there's no coverage, yeah. you know, you don't... It's a break from mm. normal life. And mm. I think that's one of the things that we receive a lot of groups that come trekking mm. and that thing of being kind of cut off mm. from the busy yeah. normal life yeah. is a very big thing for them. And obviously the nature is stunning. Mm and uh, you know the snow covered peaks mm. and you know up, up at Pindar you get up in the morning and there are peaks uh, mm. above 6,000 meters all around you. Yeah. first time must have been in, in I think uh, that was in 99 mm. and only five years ago and I think it must have been a spellbinding experience for you like the very first time when when you went to that place right yeah it mm. was it was uh, very cold but very very <laughs> yeah. nice 
Ja, yeah. yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And we walked up above the glacier, up to a peak there. And yeah. even if you walk even further up, you come up to a small lake and it's mm. absolutely mm. stunning. Yeah, so when people come from the cities, you know, here in India itself, like they come here and they actually enjoy living in the mountains. But I've seen since I live in my village, I have seen the the negative part of that also, you know, how it, it's very difficult to live there. Yeah. I've seen places where there is no road connectivity and even in my village also, like in 2009, I guess, the electricity came and before that there was no electricity. Wow. And yeah, and then in 2017-18, then the road connectivity was there. Mm. So I feel that it's been, it, this is also a part where the people are actually struggling. But then again, I want to know, uh, since we are here, so we need to be grateful for the beauty that we have around. Mm. So, ma'am, why is it important to be grateful for in our life, like the things that we have specially, especially? Yeah, I think that gratitude is uh, maybe the, the greatest recipe against uh, depression and negativity. Yeah. Uh, it's it's so easy to look at what you do not have mm. and look at what other people have mm. and we have this idiom that the grass is always green around the, the other, other side. side yeah so uh, it's like that feeling that if i just had mm. what he has mm. my life would be better mm. and uh, in most instances that's not true mm. and the grass is not greener on the, uh, the other side indeed yeah. it depends on your perspective and I think that if you start looking for things to be grateful for in mm. your own life, your, perspe your perspective somehow changes. Mm. And uh, I was just talking to a class about this yesterday that, mm. you know, we have had so many young people coming on groups. Yeah. And uh, they come from all over the world. Mm. And a thankful person mm. stands out. Yeah. You know, for me as a leader, when I see a, a person who is like, this was so good. Thank you so much for making this food for us. Thank you so much. It spreads positivity like mm. that. Indeed. Whereas if you have people complaining, it's the exact opposite. Mm. Yeah. Negativity, yeah. heaviness, mm. nobody is happy. Yeah. So if you have that one person that is really thankful, mm. that spreads to the whole group. Indeed. And uh, as an employer, I would look for that person. That's what I told the class yesterday, and, yeah. and it's really, you know, because it, it's the whole atmosphere changes mm. if you have a, a thankful person in the room. Mm. Indeed. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's really important, and I mean, people sit in big cities and they dream about going yeah. to a place like Pitoraga. Mm. So why wouldn't we be thankful? Why not? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking to my one of my friends who was in Delhi and he was talking a lot about you know the pollution and the population is so much there and it's difficult for you know that if you come from and if you go from the kind of setting that I'm right now like a town and kind of very you know peaceful place and I suddenly I go to Delhi or the city where I like you know it's hustle bustle off every day then it's difficult for us to actually settle there but then then they are really thankful for you know they always look for you know that looking forward to coming here and then enjoying the serenity so I also want to know because it's so difficult, you know, that when you come from a different country and you settle here, there must have been some sort of cultural shock also. Uh, yeah. If you would like to highlight any cultural shock that you had in your initial days. Um, I think it, you, the, the hardest thing was maybe that you felt insecure all the time. Am yeah. I doing the right thing? Yeah. Is this is this what you're supposed to be doing here? Mm. You know, you don't really, you, you feel insecure mm. and uh, you also feel in many ways like a child again because you're language kind of, barrier not just language but also how to do things like mm. we came and it's like oh we have to get a hold of a gas cylinder how do we get a hold of a gas cylinder i've never even seen a gas cylinder before i came to india because in norway we only use electricity so the many of these practical things in life you know you just don't know how to do it and you have to ask for help mm. for almost everything so that's quite humbling in a way, mm. and you you feel that, mm. well, I'm an adult, I'm supposed to know these things, but I don't. Mm. So so that's kind of difficult. Mm. You know, you come and you you just have to mm. be like a child. You have to ask for help. Mm. Luckily, there are many nice people around who would help yeah. us. Mm. But uh, it, it's it's quite challenging in many ways. Yeah. yeah. And how has your experience with the Indian people here, especially like since you have lived here more, like in Uttarakhand? Yeah. In the mountains. 
I mean, our experience has been super positive. That's yeah. why we're still here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that, you know, people are usually very helpful. Mm. And uh, if you ask for help, then most people would go out of their way to help. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, mm. I have been a good experience. Had a yeah. Good experience. Yeah. yeah. Your initial days when there was a language barrier and it's a difficult to build a connection with the people out mm. here. And now I've seen that you know you have a very good connection with the people in Pitharagad and other cities also. So my question to you is that what are some keys for building a healthy relationship? Mm. When I'm talking about relationship, it can be friendship, it can be not only about the romantic relations. Mm. Yeah. I think um, I think one thing is to come into a relationship with a heart that you want to learn something mm. uh, i'm not coming into a relationship thinking i have all the answers i'm mm. just gonna let you know what mm. the right thing is mm. i don't think that's a good starting point it's more to come in with an open heart and mm. i want to listen mm. to what you have experienced in life and mm. what you know what your thoughts mm. and perspectives are mm. and from that i know i can learn something mm. i think that's a, a good starting point yeah and then, of course, communication mm. is important in any relationship. Yeah. If you, if you stop communicating, mm. then uh, there is always a lot of room for misunderstanding mm. and for hurt. Yeah. So, uh, so to try and communicate well, I think, is important, and and not take, think that the other person that you are relating to, that he should understand what you are thinking. Yeah. I think that's some a mistake we often make. Mm. That uh, okay, why why isn't he getting what I think? Mm. Well, if you haven't told mm. him, then it's hard, you know. Indeed, indeed. Yes. So, so having that kind of open communication, yeah, and then uh, and then having a desire to actually know that person for who he or she is, mm. I think is uh, giving space and yeah, yeah, nice. Mm. So now it's been more than 20 years, I guess, that since you are married. Yes. Four. Yeah. Five. Five. Yeah. 25, yeah. And the similar jubilees around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. So would you like to share some of your learning points? Because it's been a successful marriage life. And uh, some of some learning points, some challenges, or what did you learn about each other during those 25 years? Like just a two, three lessons, if you would like mm -hmm. to share. I think, um, uh, I think we tend to think that before we get married, we have to invest in the relationship. Mm. But then after you get married, we sometimes maybe forget yeah, that's the f that we have to keep investing. Indeed, indeed. And uh, I think that's very important that we kind of continue to, mm. to take time to spend quality time together, mm. uh, to make sure that we appreciate one another mm. and not take one another for granted. Indeed. And uh, I also think for us it's been very helpful to learn about um, different personalities mm. and how different personalities work together. Mm. And I think that has really helped us to play on each other's strengths mm. instead of be frustrated with each other's weaknesses. Mm. You know, because there are always differences. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, you can think that, why hasn't he done this? Yeah. But, then, but then instead see that, you know, well, he might have a different strength than me. Mm. Maybe I can go in and do that because that's naturally my strength. Mm. And then we, instead of being threatened or mm. frustrated with each other's dif differences, mm. we could rather make sure that we are a team that we build together so that we can benefit from each other's mm. you know, strengths mm. instead. Yeah. So like marriage should not be a destination, it should be a journey. Definitely. The moment we think that the marriage is our destination, then we stop putting efforts because the thing that I want to achieve or I have achieved it. Yeah. Now I want to you know, put efforts there. Yeah. So I think we need to think about that marriage is a beginning. Yeah. Or I think it's a great awakening. Mm, yeah. Definitely. It's a big, big decision that we make. Yeah. Indeed. It is. Yeah. And then, you know, 
the benefit of mm-hmm. having a a relationship where you can kind of work together mm-hmm. and uh, figure things out and stand strong together is amazing. Because mm-hmm. then, uh, it, it that can be a very safe place for your kids mm-hmm. and for other people around you as well. Mm-hmm. So, but it takes communication. Yeah, and it takes uh, investment. Mm-hmm. So, ma'am, uh, when did you start wearing as you are wearing the kumoni and the Indian attire, like sari and this thing? So, when did you start it and do you really like wearing these things? When did I start <laughs> wearing a sari? I think I started wearing a sari more on a daily basis when I started teaching and teaching. Yeah, that's Before then, I would only wear saris for special locations. I yeah. used to wear suits. Nice. Uh, I have always, as long as I've lived in India, I have uh, worn Indian mm. clothes. Mm. And uh, I think that's a nice way to respect the culture mm. and to show that I love and appreciate this culture. Mm. And um, yeah, I like it. And, and the sari makes, it's a very kind of feminine look, mm. yeah, which I like. Yeah. Do you, you also apply, you know, that sindoor, so yeah. So yeah. if you do the same thing in Norway, probably they might think what's wrong. <laughs> uh, that would look funny. Yes. Yeah. And but uh, it's good to make it clear that I'm a married woman. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, uh, yeah. That's the way to do it here. Yeah. In Norway, it's the ring that shows that. Mm. So then, yeah. It's the ring that you're wearing. Yeah. Yeah. So the next question for you is that if you could take one thing from this culture to Norway, mm-hmm. what would that thing be? And why? Ah. Uh, there are many things I would say, yeah. but uh, I think it can be more one, than one. Yeah, one thing that I really, really appreciate is how people here respect the mm. older generation. Yeah. This is something we have lost a bit, I would say, mm. in the West. Yeah. And, and I think older people often feel mm. that they don't have any value. Mm. And uh, it's a huge problem in Norway with depression amongst mm. old people. Okay. Um, so I think the way that you know you take care of the old generation and show them respect. Uh, I love the fact that you touch the older people's feet. It's it's a beautiful way of showing that respect. Mm. I think that is one thing I would like to take, and also the way that you show hospitality. Mm. Um, treating the guest as a god. A <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And um, yeah, something that um, can be learned from this De- culture. Def- for sure. Sure. Definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, one question that can be a bit deeper on this what is life for you? How do you see it? <laughs> what is life? Wow. That's a big thing. Yeah. I think life is about... Um, I think it's important in life to find some purpose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, if you only live life because you're going to get enough money and mm-hmm. fulfill your needs, it's become, it becomes quite... Narrow. Narrow, yeah. yeah. So I think, for me, life is a lot about kind of investing in people. Mm-hmm. Um, it helps bring people to s- find their potential mm-hmm. um, finding ways to let people step up and grow in confidence um, if we if we live only for ourselves it becomes a very yeah a narrow uh, kind of a your perspective is not very big you yeah, know the town yeah so if we can manage to live our lives so that it has a positive impact on others, mm. I think that is uh, that gives purpose and meaning. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. How can we make our life more meaningful? I think this just is, that looking yeah. for ways to serve others, looking mm. for ways to to you know if we have learned something that is helpful for us, mm. maybe we can teach it to somebody else. Uh, I know that uh, gratitude is one thing that is very important to you and I see how you teach it to your students and Mm. it has a very positive impact Mm. that spreads. Mm. You know, that is a way of, you know, using what we have been given Mm. to to benefit others. And I think 
I think that's a great thing. Yeah, nice. So the question that I would like to ask you now, what are some key values that you follow in your life? And why are they important to you? Mm. Uh, I mean, in the ILC, and we yeah. have the very first value we have is to appreciate the individual. And I think that's, that's a guiding light for me in a way that every single person has value, mm. whether he's from a, or whatever background he's from, yeah. uh, you know, whatever, however educated he is, you know, whatever race he's from, mm. it actually doesn't matter mm. because as a human being, we have value just yeah. because, you know, of mm. being a human being. Indeed. So I think that's a value that is important to me. Mm. And then, um, I mean, we, we often talk about the value of integrity and that's also a, a value that I believe in, that I want to be true to who I am in front of whoever is there. And uh, that I don't change the way I kind of talk about life, my perspective is just to please a person in front of me. And also that, you know, I believe that uh, to speak the truth mm. and to be uh, truthful mm. in in every way, uh, that is definitely a, ha uh, a high value for me. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, definitely. So how was that thought actually built up when you thought of coming to India? It's been more than... 25 years? It's almost. On me was 25, yeah. Uh, I, think, I think it was, we always, Simon and I always had that desire that we would not live, a, we, we used to call it an A4 life in the sofa. That was like what we did not want. A4 life? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just normal. <laughs> oh, a4, yeah. The A4 paper is the a4 normal a4 size. Yeah. <laughs> we did not want to just live a normal life mm. where you don't have any new challenges. But mm. I think we had this kind of adventurous spirit inside of us where we wanted to do something different mm. and, uh, and, and not just live this normal life where you just, you know, you earn your money, you buy your house, you buy your car. And it's yeah. like, that's what life is about. That was never did not seem very satisfying to us. Mm. So I think we were looking for mm. uh, a, an opportunity to do something different. Yeah. And then when we then we came we here uh, in 97 to do a trek when we were just engaged. Mm. And when we were then asked if we would want to consider coming back and working as tour guides mm. in this area, then we were like, yes, this is an kind of the opportunity we have been looking for. Yeah. We had no idea that we would stay for 25 years yeah. at that point. But um, yeah, it's been a, an amazing journey of adventure. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. And what was your parents' reaction when they heard that, oh, you are going to settle in India? <laughs> uh, and it must have been surprising for them. Yeah, I think it did, was a, a little bit hard for them, to, I think. To actually accept the thing. Yeah, mm. I think it was. Because mm -hmm. it's you know, they had dreamt about having their kids and grandkids mm. close by and mm. that never happened. So, of course, that was a bit challenging, I mm. think, for them. Uh, but I think, especially as time went by, as we started the ILC, I'm, both of my parents are teachers. Yeah. So, you know, when they saw that we were able to kind of give English to people here and, mm. and kind of have a positive impact on the society, I think mm. they they really valued it and mm. they felt it was yeah, yeah. good. Yeah. It took a while for them to get there. But yeah. Yeah. So since now we've talked about the ILC, wow. my question to you is when, what's, when you started the ILC, what was your you know, thought behind it? Mm. Why? What was, like, what was the main purpose behind it? Why did you even think of starting it? It's a difficult to start a business you know, in other countries, yeah. Yeah. I think. <coughs> I think, you know, we had already been living here then for quite a few years. We lived in Raniket and we had been on many, many treks. We had met many people. And it was like Kuman had moved into our hearts. Yeah. So I think we had this desire to do something that would benefit this society. Mm. Uh, just because we love we loved this place. Mm. And um, so then we, you know, we were thinking of some different ideas and thought that, you know, English is something that people really need and and maybe we could, you know... Initially, we thought we would just do it like for a few months 
of the year when we don't have groups. That was the kind of initial thought. Of course, it developed and, and yeah. it was it became some a bigger thing than we had initially thought about. But our desire was to you know give people of Pitoragar a chance to uh, to be exposed mm. to um, good English, different cultures. You know, so that, you know, when people from here would go to Delhi or would go outside, they, they wouldn't feel intimidated, mm. but that they could come confidently and, you know, and then be able to reach their dream. So I think for me, when I see that somebody else reaches their dream, mm. that's kind of that I feel very fulfilled or happy or satisfied or whatever I should say. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's, I think that was the, the main idea as we started the ILC. And mm. that's very beautiful. So yes, you've seen you have had many tracks here. If you could suggest some tracks that we should go, that I have particularly not been to different tracks. So like people, like as again I said, you know, that we are living here in the mountains and we sometimes we take things for granted and we are not even aware about the tracks, the beautiful places that are uh, just nearby. Yeah. So since we have explored Uttarakhand, Kumaungarwal, so any places uh, you would like to recommend for trekking, hiking? Um, now I did more treks in the earlier years than I am in the later years. There were kids and yeah. there was ILC and stuff. But mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, the Pindari trek is a beautiful one. Uh, is it in Bagishwar or? Yeah, yeah, in Bagishwar district. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I remember once. We went up to a place called Rani Sitma. Rani Sitma. Where is it? Uh, beyond Namik, on the way to Namik Glacier. Okay. That was like, like coming to heaven. I remember we came to a big, big field, and there was a river going through. Okay. And it was just like the most stunning thing. Mm. And then also on the way up to Milam Glacier, where you come to a place called Martoli, mm. and you can go up a valley called Shalang Valley. Selling when uh, up towards Nanda Kot. Mm. That was also absolutely amazing. Yeah. Amazing. The last question then for you. And uh, if you could say something to the youngster of Pitharagara or Kumo and Uttarakhand, what would you say? Wow. <clears throat> well, I think uh, don't look uh, down on yourself for being at Kumani. That's the first thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, you have something to bring to this world in a way. Mm. And uh, with, the, uh, with the beauty of this culture and uh, uh, it's, don't, don't look down on who you are. Be proud of speaking Pahari. Be proud of uh, your roots. And, uh, and I also want to say that, um, yeah, be true to who you are and to to, uh, yeah, don't let money get in the way of your values, but, uh, but let uh, truth be what guides you. And um, yeah, and go and uh, bring the beauty of this culture to other places in India and the world.